I knew the afternoon bite was going to be right, but you got to live and die by your plan. Looks like some tunas back there blowing up. Yeah, they're jumping, going crazy. Look at all the birds on us now. There we go. This is so fun coming out here and watching them blow up on those baits. I don't, I mean, seven miles from the dock. Are you kidding me? God dang. Are you kidding me, buddy? Big mutton snappers. I've said it a million times, and I do really love Key West during the winter. It's such a great escape. It's easy to get to, you know, half a day on a plane. I'm here, I'm with my boys down in the Keys, and it's prime time for fishing. The first trip back to Key West each year is kind of like getting the gang back together. You know, we go hard pretty much from January all the way through October, and then we take a little bit of family time, some time to goof off, kind of regroup. And January, even into February, we all kind of reconvene, usually right here at Ocean's Edge, and we're ready to roll. Even when we're not together, you know, Rush and I are talking all the time, we're watching each other's Instagram, you kind of get a good feel for what's going on down here. And this time of year, I've got one thing on my mind, and it's Wahoo. I try not to post too much right before Ali gets here because it really chaps his ass when the week before we just lit the wahoo up. He looked like a good one. The toughest thing about wahoo fishing is it just made up of little tiny windows, usually around a moon phase or for whatever reason they just decide they want to bite. Rush and our buddy Nate, AKA the ginger pirate, they absolutely smashed it. You know, I wish I would have been here for that kind of fishing, but again, you just have to have all these things line up. And when you're on a fixed schedule flying in from out of town, sometimes it does happen, sometimes it doesn't. But for this trip, the Wahoo stuck their nose in the mud and it just wasn't on the menu. Finally, once I talk Ali down off the Wahoo bite, what are our options? Well, we're already getting a little bit of a late start because there's stuff we had to do in the morning. I knew the afternoon bite was going to be good. It was going to be, it was going to be right, but you can only do so much in a three quarter day. You got to live and die by your plan. I like it, buddy. Water looks beautiful. See all these frigates around. What are you thinking here? Tunas, maybe a sail or something? Tunas, sails, kingfish, bonita. Mahi, you got a shot at anything right here when you got these conditions. Really? How about catching me some dinner, buddy? I need something to take back to the restaurant. As usual, I just kind of put my faith in my boy. I'm down here to get some sun, have a few laughs, a couple of cold ones, and maybe catch a fish. So I asked Rush, you know, like I always do, what's the best available? What are our options? We kind of formulate a plan from there and shove off. What can I do? You want to start getting some surface stuff going? I got to set this anchor up so if we do hook a sail and we got to chase them down on that light tackle. Put it on the ball. Put it on the ball, you know. My plan for this day, you know, only a few hours to fish is just basically go anchor up on a couple spots. We we're going to look for some sails, some tunas, just live chumming with pilchards. Um, and then if that worked out in a reasonable amount of time, we we're going to go look for some bottom fish. Ali's always wanted to catch an African pompano. I was going to hit a wreck. See if there are some Africans there. If not, I'm sure there'd be some muttons or something we could pull off the bottom. I just got one out behind the boat. How far out? Not very. 25 yards. I'm gonna back the drag off of this too since it's gonna be sitting in the rod holder. So when you do... Just tighten it up. Yeah, give it a, give it a crank. That's a lot of tunas there, you see that? Big old spot of fish there. In between us and all those frigates. The birds are over them now. Visually, it's very similar to what we look for when we're chumming. The birds start to come down. Oh, saw a little pop. I think that was one. Oops, saw a couple. Oh, that was definitely one. Next thing you know, you've got fish blowing out of the water, launching into the sky, boiling all over the place. And that's what tuna fishing is all about. 
This one was just getting bit by something. Oh, right there. Get him? Yeah. Nice. Ah, oh, they're going off, huh? Movie in the show. So cool. What you got, Captain Russ? Looks like some tunas back there blowing up. But it's very San Diego looking, except for the frigates. <laughs> Don't have any frigates in San Diego? I like to throw the anchor down for the simple reason I want to draw the fish to me and get them eating right behind the boat. Now I'm stationary, the fish stay stationary, and I can get them zoned in right behind the boat. Feels very tuna-ish. This guy's just laying there, though. Might not be a tuna. Oh, they're really going back there, Rush. Oh, uh, they're going off, huh? Yeah, they're jumping, going crazy. Look at all the birds on us now. Movie in the show. Probably the craziest thing about tuna fishing here in the Keys is you do a lot of it on the anchor. I can tell you at home, I've been tuna fishing for a long time and we've maybe anchored and caught tuna a handful of times. For these guys, it's really how they do business. They kind of set up in about 100 feet of water, give or take, put the anchor down, start the chum, and you know what happens if you chum, they will come. There we go. Nice little football. Standard model. This is so fun coming out here and watching them blow up on those baits. I, don't, I mean, seven miles from the dock, are you kidding me? The greatest thing about Key West is we have some of the shortest runs you're ever gonna see. You can literally run out seven miles and catch fish. You could be fishing in 20 minutes from the dock and have some of the best fishing you'll ever see in your life. Wahoo got him? Big team? Look at that. Somebody got him. That's old though, That's not. that just didn't happen. Look at that little circle hook right in the corner. Isn't that perfect? I mean, he wasn't going anywhere. Job. Nice work, thank you. That's fun stuff. Fun stuff. I think those blackfin even pull a little harder pound for pound. And that's not a very big tuna. He they pull, don't they? Pulls pretty good. We got plenty more where that came from. My favorite outfit for tuna fishing, especially blackfin in that 15 to 30 pound range, is a light 5500 10 slammer spinning reel with 50 pound braid and I'm using anywhere from a 25 pound tusk leader to a 40 pound tusk leader with a small 1-0 hook to a size one hook. What size is that little VMC you're using? Size one. One, yeah, that's small. I try not to go below a 1-0 at home, but we scale it down as much as we can. Now, if I got them going in the corner and we want to put a bunch in the box, I'm going to gear up then. You know, once I got them whipped up and they're eating out of my hand, but for the most part, we're doing the same thing. That natural presentation is so huge, you know? Let that, let that fish swim better. It's the same reason we use a short top shot. We want it's easier to swim with braid tied to you than it is with a bunch of mono. I just got whacked, oh, he came back. When they decide to come up, they come up, huh? Oh yeah, that's, I mean, like little mini foamers. They will get, I mean, they will get crazy back there. Nothing fights like a tuna, even a little one. The blackfin tuna really doesn't get the respect of a yellow fin or a blue fin. He's kind of more on par with an albacore. But I'll tell you, pound for pound, these are a hard fighting fish. They're gamers, much like albacore. If you find them, you throw chum, more times than not, they're gonna cooperate. And it just gives you an awesome fish visually to watch, catch, pull on, and you can go home with a great tuna dinner. Not a bad way to spend the afternoon though, right? Well, we leave the dock at one o'clock, well full of bait. There's not many places you can run seven miles and consistently catch tuna either. I do like these rods, man. They feel good. No, I, I got, just got a few at the house. I've been using them like the seven footers, you know, for live bait. And even bottom fishing, I Ooh, really like it. feels like them. he just got eaten. You get a little heavy? Yeah, this is like something just took a, a bite of him. It's hard out here in Key West being a hooked fish. It's not easy. Everybody's after you. I feel like I got a half now. <laughs> oh, I see a shark. LT Bordeaux. Uh, see, my fish in his mouth. Look at that shark. Woof. 
Look at that bite, one bite. You called it. Wow. Look at that bite. What kind of shark was that? Sandbar. Oh. What do you think about that? Woo. You don't want that to be your leg. That, I was going to say, I think I don't want that to be my thigh. And at home, we might lose one or two fish a year to a shark. What's your, what's your ratio here? <laughs> a little more than that. <laughs> A little more than one or two a year. You sure? Sometimes things just work out the way you plan them. There we go. Nice little football. First anchor drop, threw a few baits out. The tunas came up crashing gangbuster. You want some of this for dinner? It didn't take very long and we were really into them. I mean, I think we probably, once it got going, fish for an hour and we had a half dozen really nice tuna there's not many places you can run seven miles and consistently catch tuna we're tuned out by this point well that leaves us a little bit of time before that sun goes down to make one more move and that was the plan i had in my head and i was going to stick to it i don't know about you man but i'm tuned out that was a good little bite there you know we we didn't leave till late in the afternoon i say we take advantage of the time we have left We'll go right out here to this little wreck. I'll do the same thing. I'll throw the hook down and let you pull on a few bottom fish. What you think about that? You know I'm always down to bottom fish. I was a, I'm gonna do a half dozen tuna in an hour. That's pretty solid. And it, you know, if we were seeing a sign of a sale or something else, I'd say let's stick it out. But uh, it can always happen. But I mean, the wreck's right here. We got a couple hours left at the most before dark. And let's go see if we find some white meat. You got it. I'll pull the anchor. Sounds good. Good thing about fishing Key West, a lot of times there's short runs. I mean, I'm not even moving right now more than three quarters of a mile. Basically, it's gonna take me longer to pull the anchor in the boat than it is to move. We're just switching spots, changing gears a little bit, quick little tackle changeover. So now it's time to put away the spinning rods and we're gonna, we're gonna bust out the conventional rods. We're dropping down to the bottom, deep water, over 200 feet and we're gonna start using leads and long leaders. So what's the theory with the really long leader? We don't do anything like that. But we're trying to get that bait away from that sinker and all that jerking action. Just to smooth it out? It's basically smooth it out. When you're cl tight, close to that sinker and this wave action, that bait's constantly just jerking. You just uh, want that thing laying on the bottom and swimming naturally. Gotcha. And the long, just like your anchor line, the more scope you put out, the more you're gonna lay, the smoother you're gonna lay. These long leaders are way out there. That lead sitting on the bottom and you have your bait swimming around 20, 25 feet away sometimes. All you're gonna feel when that fish eats a lot of time is a slight little tap. Oh, it's not something nice. Been a lot of nice muttons around here. Oh, now you're talking my language, buddy. The other tough part for people is once they do feel the bite, is they want to reel two or three times and think they're going to be tight. You got to reel forever. You have to reel until that rod doubles over and loads up, and then you're tight. There you go. Get that head. The day might have been shorter than I was winding on that. <laughs> That's a lot of winding. Yeah, well, imagine trying to explain it to clients. You yeah. want to take one turn on the handle and wait for it to get tight. No, this isn't bad. Oh, this is a good fish. He's pulling drag. I'm trying to slow him down. There you go. I feel like every year when I get back in the mutton game, I forget how hard they pull. Well, remember now, we're in the deep water too. So, you know, that fish, if it's a bottom fish, a grouper or a mutton, it's gonna, it's gonna float about 150 feet off the bottom. You're, he's done. He's gonna blow up, embolize, and you're gonna know it's a bottom fish, mutton, grouper. If it's a AP or an amberjack or something like that, they're gonna fight you all the way to the top. And what you're gonna notice about out here with these muttons, they are really, really pink. Oh, really? They're deep? Yep. 
eating shrimp and stuff. Different, just different. Hopefully that's a nice mutt. He seems like he's not giving you much of a tussle anymore. No, he slowed way He'll up. He'll end up floating up right, right out here, probably. Boy, did you call that? Never. Nice fish, dude. Never gets old, my friend. Nice mutt. Oh. There you go, pink one. You gotta reach over and just grab him by the gills. It looks like he's hooked pretty good. Whoa. Look at that, brother. That is a nice, nice mutton right there. If you said what's one reason to come to Key West, this is it. Look at that fish. It's just so rad. Well, you said you wanted uh, white fish for dinner. You got white fish for dinner. I can already smell the panko and the blackening, I think. I might have to join you again. I, yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. You know, everybody at home goes crazy for these guys, too. Rush and I have fished enough to know what each other likes to catch and, you know, doesn't get so excited about. For me out here, I love to bottom fish. I don't know why. I think it's because the bottom fish are so big, they pull so hard, and they're delicious. And Rush had a bottom fish plan all lined up for me. You tight? Yeah, it's not big. Another mutton? God, these things pull. Don't they? I'm telling you, every year, I know I love them, but I forget. I can't believe how many of these big muttons you've consistently put me on over the years. It's like, there's an endless supply of them. And the ones out here are beautiful fish. All average size, beautiful fish. Look at the air come out of them. Are you kidding me, buddy? Oh, I love these fish, man. Love these fish. Pretty, pretty fish. What an awesome fish, man. Thank you. Well, you got dinner. We got dinner and then some. We can invite some friends. Fishing in the deep is really different than fishing shallow here. A lot of times we're catching really nice muttons and groupers in 40, 50, 60 feet of water. And that's just not the case here. And with that depth comes I guess confusion, like you really don't know exactly what you have. You've got 40 feet a liter, an eight ounce sinker, all that stuff swinging around down there. And while we're looking for a mutton or an African pompano, you just never know. God dang. They pulling? Not, oh no, there he goes. Big mutton snappers. Man, I want that AP to eat. <sighs> What's the AP fight like? Like a jack? Maybe it's an AP. Oh, that's got a lot of bend to it. Oh, it's heavy as hell, buddy. Oh yeah. Dude, I turn it a little. Yeah. Going to the rail rod. You got him off the bottom at all? He's up off. I think it might just be a giant. Might must. be your. It might be your AP. You want to leader this thing with you? Oh, wait, it's in the. It's in the prop. All kinds of wrapped up. What is it? It looks like a mutton. Oh, oh. Jack. Well, that would explain that fight. And we're seven miles from Key West, huh? Seven miles, dude. I mean, the variety. You want to fight? This guy's ready for it. We'll go ahead and let this guy go. Good luck, buddy. Nice fish, dude. Oh, God. My... That hurt? Yeah, a lot. They pull a little bit. On this trip, I told Ali, you know, we probably weren't going to have a good, good shot at catching a wahoo. But you give me a few hours, you give me a time to put a plan together, and we'll make something happen. One of the craziest things about fishing down here in the Keys is sometimes all it takes is a couple hours. We have gone on 15 hour missions, miles and miles away, got pounded to death and caught a couple of fish. And conversely, we've run right out front into some of the spots that everybody knows about, put our time in, and within a couple of hours, put together an excellent day. 
you, you take the knowledge that you have from being out there so many days. You know what's going on. You know where to be, what to do, how to set up. And to see that plan actually come together after you thought it out in your head, it's extremely rewarding for you and your customers. This trip is living proof. If you've got a few hours to kill in the Keys, or South Florida, hey, book that half day trip. Get out, see some new techniques, see some new water, and you might even put together a hell of a day.